Hi guys, welcome today to our little webinar and our presentation. Uh, it's to do with what we call the McStraw method. So the question that I'm asking you today is this. Are you short on time? Are you time poor? Are you busy? And therefore you're finding it a bit of a struggle to find the time for your health and fitness. So short on time, and I'm gonna to prove to you, I wanna show you today, how in less than 2% of your time in the week, I can actually get your fitness back. All right, so hi, I'm Don McStraw, and I'm the creator behind the McStraw Method. So my job in life at the present moment is I'm here to help people who are time poor, and they're getting challenges in their life, particularly with the fitness, and I'm here to help you get that back in less than 2% of your week. It's not a lot of time, but it is possible. So my question to you guys, so what I'd like you to do today is in the chat box here, simple question, just to give us an idea about where we all are. Uh, first of all, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dom. I'm from Sydney. I work in management consulting. Simple as that there. But then the next thing I want you to do is just go and put in there, what's the hardest part for you? So right here right now today what's the hardest part for you for keeping up with your health and fitness so let's take 10 seconds and let's start noting them down so for me and we'll go through this in the presentation for me it was it was just making actually making the time it was the commitment to myself so busy corporate job um, working, young kids, out of the morning, home late. So the hardest time for me was actually making the commitment. For some of you, it might be you can make the commitment, but you've just tried. Um, you've tried this, you've tried that, you've not got results. And maybe the hardest part is actually continuing on with the process. Okay, so as I said, my name is Don McStraw. That's a picture of me. Yep, that's whenever I had lost the bulk of my weight after my little health scare. And you can see there, that's me at 47 on the right-hand side, um, entering my first MMA competition, my first combat sport in over 25 years. And the picture in the background is myself and a fellow colleague, Andrew, uh, helping run some participants through a winter special camp on the zoo. So again, my focus is conditioning and performance so what i'm going to do with your permission today on the webinar uh, i'm going to um i'm going to ah uh, i may swear so if you guys are all cool with that i'm just going to jump into this um it's just not one of these pre-recorded scripts um i'm going to stumble as you said there you go there's the um but i want to just be frank i want to be honest with you and i want you guys to do the same thing so if you're cool with that um simply hit give me a yes thumbs up emoji whatever it is in the box and then we're going to jump right into this presentation okay so to keep this real i'm not going to talk about any hacks no magic pills no bs potions no magic lotions that you're going to rub on um i'll um and ah and i'm going to be me so you're probably going to get a few four letter words so i apologize in advance but if that does offend you then please what i want you to do is actually want you to stop now and step away from the screen and um, this is just me being real. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the three elements of what is the foundation to what I call the McStraw method. And they actually help me navigate my way back from the situation was I was in. So I'm gonna share with you some of those in the hope that you can take something away from this presentation today. So yep, yeah, so I've been there. Um, I it was frustrating. And you know, what I call my little medical hiccup was literally you know to wake me the f up right so there you go so that's me top left hand corner um 115 kilos now i'm only 5'8 so 172 centimeters that's not nice and that's my daughter jordan born uh, as you can see by my face i've got severe rosacea so i look like i'm three parts pissed all the time looks like i mean I'm, I'm on an episode of the simpsons i did make some changes and as you can see, when my son Cody was born, I'm at 37, I actually dropped some weight. But as you can see, I've still got that pigment through my face, um, obviously bathing him for the first time. 
come back down a couple of years later. There he is in his child care. Um, and as you can see, I'm, I'm still carrying a bit of beef. I've, I've always been a solid guy, but that was not exactly what I wanted to be. Uh, the next pick is 47. So you see seven years have passed. So this is not, again, a quick fix. It took me a while to find this out. And obviously that's where I am now. And I'm, I'm actually now 50, but that's me back then at 84 kilos. I don't think I've been 84 kilos since my late teens, early 20s. And that's the result of the program that I had finally come across that worked for me. And I've now gone on to use that with not only myself, but when I became a certified personal trainer with my clients. So question, has anything in this been helpful for you? Has there been any similarities? Like, did you get where I was? Um, is that you? Have you ballooned up and down? Is it the fact that kids have come along? Or is it the fact, you know, is your, is your story different? What I'd like you to do is just put in the chat box there about anything that has maybe resonated with you and sort of, yeah, I, I get that, I get that. And if it's not, hey, just say so. Not, nothing like that. My situation is completely different. Chuck it in and we'll use that throughout the course of the presentation. Okay, so this is not about impressing anyone. So I know that a lot of us, when we do these types of presentations, people will sit back and go, yeah, you're a wanker. All oh, right, I get that. But look, it's not about that. It's about sharing the knowledge that it took me a while to find and I'm going to give it to you. And if you can apply it, then, and it works for you, then great. It's not rocket science, all right? So like the sign says, you can go either direction with this. It's, it's completely up to you. So step one, food is fuel, all right? It's not something that we should be looking at as some scientific wizardry the insta hacks the bs the calorie the macro this the intermittent fasting it's bloody food and food is what you do you put it in to fuel your body your body's the machine all right so what's the negative aspect so what you hear today is in order for you to look good, to feel great, to get fitter and get felt healthier, you can't eat good food. You can't eat certain foods. Pizza is bad. Burgers are bad. You can't eat a laksa. Man, it's like that guy there. Go suck on a lemon. That's exactly what I see when I see that sort of stuff being put out there. So you've got to cut out your carbs, all right? You need to cut your calories. You've got to be in a calorie deficit in order for you to get lean. And the worst one, you either stop eating something or you've got to eat less. Now, there are things like what we call BMR, basal metabolic rate, the amount of energy that your body needs just for you to stay alive and breathe. And for me, at my age, at my weight, at my height, and the fact that I'm a guy, when that's around 1,800 calories a day, there is no hope in hell that I'm going to survive on 1,000 calories a day and still be able to perform. I will get lean, I will do all that, but I'm going to end up looking like a bloody hunger striker. And then I'm going to be, as you say, hangry. And I'm not going to be a nice person to be around. So the positive, you need to actually understand the value of the food that you eat. If you're a vegan, if you're a vegetarian, you're a pescatarian, you're a meat eater, you don't eat this, you do eat that. It's really simple. Guys, get to understand what the bloody hell it is that you're putting in your mouth. Understand the value of that, that it goes into you, that contributes to you, for you to let your body survive. All right? And why do I say that? Because all diets work. They're a diet. Stop eating something. Stop eating so much. I don't care who you are. Your body will change. Your body will start to feed on itself. The problem with the word diet, we don't stick to these things. Right? We've got Weight Watchers, the Nordic diet, the Keto is famous at the moment. Volumetrics, volume, Atkins. 
if it fits your macros, the Mediterranean diet, the zone, the raw food, the soup, the Mayo Clinic. Man, no wonder it's so bloody confusing. But every single one of them, if you try them and you commit to them, then yes, they will work. So I'm just going to talk about one in particular. It's not really a diet. It's intermittent fasting. Now, this is not something that I practice day in, day out. But this is something that worked for me. So it's not a diet. I'm just consuming my food in a particular period of time. I'm still eating the food. I'm still enjoying the foods that I like. Right? But I'm happy to eat it in a certain pattern. All right? So which diets have you guys tried? So intermittent fasting for me, I don't call it a diet. It's a lifestyle choice that I have made. So put in there, let me know what diets that you have tried. Let's see what's out there. All right, so which way do we go? Are we going to go down the path of diets? Are we just going to understand what our food is like? Are you going to try intermittent fasting? What I simply encourage you to do is this. Pick something. Commit to it for a period of time. And I don't mean two weeks. Right? Throughout this talk, we'll start to talk about habits, behaviors, making changes. A lot of this is, and the science around it, is you need to at least for three months or 90 days, right, 12 weeks, you need to commit to something for that period of time in order for you to see an actual results. Okay, so food, it's fuel. Whatever you're gonna do with it, commit to it. If you want to go on a Burger King diet for that period of time, you know what? Good luck to you, commit to it. Right, so again, it's a choice. So a bit like what Nero uh, would have been facing in the matrix. He took the red pill, he took the blue pill. If we make a choice with understanding the value of food, and trust me, you don't need me to stand here and preach to you about what food you should and shouldn't eat. You don't need the Instagram model to do that. If you're really struggling with it and you have got some metodological reason, nutritional reason for it, then you go to a qualified nutritionist, you go to a qualified dietitian, and you get that help. So number one is understanding food. Simple, not rocket science, I told you this. Number two, you need to strengthen condition your body, but you need to do it efficiently. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you about the way that I do it, how you do it, it's entirely up to you, but like anything, it's got to be consistent. It should not take you hours. Okay, my workouts, I don't spend any more than 30 minutes a day doing my workout. I still have other things that I do that has my body moving, but it is not taking hours. So the negative side, like this guy here, this is exactly the facial expression that I that I found. It was like, oh, I better do what? Right? You don't need to go to a club that's got 27 bloody stations of exercises. Yep, people know who I'm talking about. You don't need that. You don't need to do high intensity interval training for 60 minutes every goddamn session. Right? I, me, I would enjoy doing that. But you don't need to do that. You don't stop cardio in order for you to build muscle. I know that there are people out there that are saying, you do cardio, it takes away from your gains. Cardio is good for your heart health. I don't give a shit what gains you've got, but if your heart can't work, mate, come and see me a couple of times and you're sitting on the bed and you're built like a brick shit house and you had a heart attack. And also to the things like, you must do X sets of Y reps for Z rounds. So you must always do German volume training in order to put on size. Okay, These are all different protocols that will work for different people at different times in their life. All right? 
Now, the positive side. Yeah, yeah, this is, here we go. This is the look on our faces that we should be. You need to keep it simple. You need to do something that you enjoy. The setup's got to be easy. If the setup's too bloody car hard, like the 27 stations, you're not going to go and do it every day. Keep it short, but more importantly, be consistent. Again, me, I run a clock for 30 minutes. I do my setup, I do my breakdown afterwards, all up, five minutes either side, I'm done. I incorporate weights into every activity. Weights can also mean my body. I am a big fan of body weight training. If you don't know how, just ask, look it up. So for me, 20 to 30 minutes, three to four times a week, that's the minimum that I expect of my clients when we're training with each other. All right? I personally choose to do it seven days a week because at 50, with a 13 year old and a 17 year old, I want to be able to keep up with them. But it's not complicated. So let's talk about some of the results because it's easy for me to sit here and say, this is what I did, no, no, no. But let's have a look at Mark. So here's a picture of Mark. All right. As you can see there, you can read it with me, All right? Mark broke his ankle. Two metal plates in and he ballooned up. Now Mark's about the same size as me, around five, seven, five, eight. Now, he was concerned about hitting 92 kilos. I and mean, again, he's in a desk bound job, but didn't really have much strength around him. Very much a typical, what I would call corporate office worker. All right. So when he started doing the work, I happened to come across Mark when I was training in a gym facility and I started bringing my programming into the gym. And as you can see there, we ended up getting him lose his 18 kilos. He's now done a couple of half marathons. And since this, he's gone on to do actually a lot more. And he's now feeling better about himself. He's not built like a brick shit house. He's not shredded, but he's able to sit down, do his job and do it for quite an extensive period of time, still get his workouts in and not feel absolutely shagged at the end of every day. And on the counter side of that there, this is Sophia. So this is a before and after. Now, the before and after there, Sophia doesn't look significantly different. You can see that she has trimmed down, right? But look at that, like that's 25 kilos difference in the person. It's not always the big, big person to the skinny, skinny person. Sometimes it's just about, you know, I'm just carrying more body fat. So she's trimmed down, she's toned up. She's been on a, she was a client with me for quite a while. All right, we went through cycle after cycle after cycle. We went through the highs and lows. And again, overall, 15% body fat down, 25% in actual body weight. So again, she was sitting up at around where Mark was, around the 85, 90, and we dropped it all the way back down to what is, a healthier weight range for her, but it allows her to get away with the type of work. So again, registered nurse, shift worker, different shifts. But we're not talking shredded bikini model. We're not talking the next Arnold Schwarzenegger. So the key takeaway here is have a plan, make it happen, be consistent. So my question, how long are you currently working out? Put it in the chat box, let me see. Come on, be honest. Is that for two hours, but you're doing it once a week? Well, there's your two hours. I'm doing mine 20 to 30 minutes every day. All right, so I'm getting my two hours in, but I'm spreading it over four hours, and I'm not, I'm not killing myself. So how long are your workouts? So again, everything has a choice. Take the 20 to 30 minute, plan it, execute it, be consistent with it, or go in, smash yourself for an hour, every day, three times a day, seven days a week, three times a week, whatever, but work out what works. Now, commitment and accountability. This is the other, this is the third pillar of the stuff that I do. So I'm not just here to just give the client their programs. I want them to be committed, not to me, they need to commit to themselves. I'll help them become accountable about chasing their goals. 
So there's a saying, if you don't commit, you don't complete. It's a bit like the thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. You don't commit to doing it. You ain't going to finish that damn thing. It's going to be sitting on the kitchen table for quite a few months. So what are the negatives? All right. Type away. Come on, I want to see what your negatives are. When you don't commit. All right. The you make mistakes. It's a bit like you're at the bottom of the well. You can see there's a way out. But it's like trying to get out of that. So have you gone down the pill path? If I take a pill, it's a fat burner. All right. Or if I drink the skinny tea, I've now got some potion or some magic lotion. If I do a tea only, the lemon detox diet. Or am I following some skinny little 20-something-year-old, male or female, six-pack abs, booty walking around in a G-string, Follow my program. Number one, they're 20 something. Gravity's not freaking hit them. They've not had a child. They probably don't know anything else but this as a job. They've not had the stresses of being under the time and the pump for deliverables within their working environment. And yet you're now going to take their advice. I mean, please. You know, a 20 year old says to me, oh, I can do this and I can do that to you. So good on you, son. All right? But. Have you had a heart attack? You had a stroke? You ever broken a bone? You ever had osteoarthritis? Have you ever had any gut problems? All right? You're a young girl. You've, you've never understood what it, what it means to go through menopause. I mean, come on. People, wake up. So, like this little guy, this is the greatest picture. So, what does success look like? When you get it right, Right? When you commit, when you are consistent, when you're either holding yourself or someone else is holding you accountable, you actually accelerate your performance. And I don't just mean that as in I'm going to be a better runner, but your day in, day out performance in your job, in your relationships. And God knows I've been there. Mine, I'm still rebuilding. In your work environment, you're actually able to go back and measure your success. You're able to set goals, hit them, set more goals. You're more engaged, like you actually freaking will want to be there. All right? You get to the point where you go, I miss the gym. I miss the, oh shit, I'm going to go for a walk. All right? You start to hold yourself accountable. So I missed the gym today, had a crappy day, shit's gone wrong at work. Damn it. Oh, I'm on your way home. You see a Burger King, a McDonald's, some fast food. I'm just going to sit and do that. And then you go, no, nah, shit, no, I'm better than that. Now, I'm not saying don't have those things. You can have them. But when you do that, make sure that you are accountable for what you do. But also, more importantly, when you're committed, when you're held accountable, you actually validate your reason why you're doing this. Okay? So it's a bit like we see in things like Spartan Race, which is the picture here, Tough mud or Obstacle Challenges, no matter what the challenge, you give it a go. As you can see, these guys, that wall's covered thick ass in mud, but people are still giving it a go. It's the challenge that gets them through. Some are doing it by themselves, some are doing it with a team. So you can do it by yourself, you can do it in a group class, you can get a coach, you can get a buddy, you can get your partner. For Christ's sake, you can get your kids to scream at you for that extra push-up. But commit. Be accountable. Again, guys, choice. What are you going to do? Are you going to choose that path of doing it? Remember what I said before, 90 days. Sit down the calendar, check it off. Register, check in, one day, two day, three day, all right? Do it. My my view, do it every bloody day. Don't say it's three days a week, because what happens if you miss Monday? Then it becomes Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And if I miss Wednesday, it comes Thursday, Friday. You know what? Just make it every bloody day. And that way, then you go down the path. So, why did you even bother to show up on this webinar? Come on, tell me. I mean, yes. You might have seen a post about it. You said this guy might have something that's worth listening to. Let's see what he's got to say. I think I know it. 
whatever, tell me why did you show up here today? All right, so we've all got a reason why we might be here. So if you're not prepared to post it in the group, I get it. But we're all sitting there and there's something out of those three things, I'm guaranteed that something there is, is, has hit a nerve or something that you might resonate with. And if you haven't, then you know what? I want you to do me. I want you to challenge me. I want you to type now in the, in the chat box. Tell me that, Dom, you're full of shit. And you don't get it, but you give me an example why you've got the solution. Tell me why you're even here, because if you'd got it, man, you would have looked at the advert for this and you would have said, oh, I've got this. You wouldn't have turned up. So please, go ahead. I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Let's see. Let me know why we're here. All right. My gut tells me this, some of us are time poor or we're short on time. That might have been the trigger. You're busy, you could be a stay at home mum or dad, and you're busy with the kids and running the household and doing the groceries and the shopping and bits and pieces and getting the kids to and from sport, la da 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 Next thing you know, you're back to bed, you're repeating the cycle seven days a week. You might be the person who has got that family at home, but you're out. You're out in the morning before the sun is up. You're getting home after the sun goes down. You're not seeing the kids. You're not seeing the partner. And then you're sitting down. So you might be time poor. You may not be a family person. You might be single. You may not have kids. You might just be starting off your career. You might be someone who's at university and working part-time. Either way, time is an issue. You've potentially tried something. You've maybe tried it several times. And it just hasn't stuck with you. Right, it hasn't worked for you. You've maybe got some results, but they haven't lasted. It's a bit like the ice cream van. It's, it's, you know, the ice cream is great, but you stand there for long enough and suddenly it melts. So the results may have not lasted. So you've done a lemon detox. You've done a skinny tea. You've done a soup diet. Uh, and that's good. And you struck a little weight and suddenly winter come along. Shit, it's cold. Started eating more. Didn't exercise. Didn't go out. Boom. You're back to where you were. And in most cases, you're back in a worse situation. So again, it's all down to choice. Remember, the red pill, the blue pill. So, now, here's my sales pitch. This is the whole thing behind this. So, why we do what we do and how we do it. So, take the picture, we, we, we have a compass. This is the fundamentals of the program that we run. We talk about our fuel. We've talked about strengthening your body. We've talked about managing your time. And we've talked about having the right mindset. And these pillars are all reflected in our mixed draw method and the programming. So the question though, is it really for you? And I'm gonna be candid, this is not for everybody. All right? It is not for everybody. I am as blunt as a cut snake. I will swear. I will call you out. Um, so, if you're a person who actually doesn't want to improve your self esteem or your health, then this is not for you. If you're the victim, if you keep playing the victim, oh, this didn't work, it's always me, it's always me. You know what? I'm sorry, but if you keep playing victim, you're never going to get over that one hurdle. You're never going to get this. If you're the smart ass, you think you know everything, but the reality is you actually still know nothing. Because if you knew everything and you were implementing it, you wouldn't be here on the call. You're small minded. So I've shown you some pictures in the background of people crawling around doing bear calls. You ain't getting down on the ground. How the hell does that help me? And if you're small minded and you don't actually act on the activity, then it's not for you. If you're the tire kicker, hey, I'm here to see if it's something that's free, something that's cheap. You know what? Go away. I'm not interested. I do not want tire kickers. And, and, and nor do most good coaches. If you're focused on, I need to be this number on the scale, and you're not concerned about how you feel in your clothes, in your skin, then I'm sorry, but your head's not in the right space. And if you're placing 
more value on the dollars and how much it's going to cost you than actually what your health is. So yeah, that's what I call the, the can't afford it syndrome. Then my program is not for you. It is not cheap. You want cheap? Go and get a $14 gym membership at any time fitness or snap fitness and not use it. So who is it for? So you are someone who has maybe had trouble getting the weight off or you've done that but you've not been able to sustain it. I want to show you a slightly different way. You're time poor and you're stressed AF, right? Everyone knows what that stands for. You maybe have got something that you don't like what you see in the mirror. Now that doesn't mean that you're ashamed of your body. You maybe just don't like, I, I don't like my bum. I don't like the fact that I've got chicken legs. I don't like the fact that I've got one shoulder bigger than the other. All right? I don't like the fact that, hey, and I'll say this candidly, I'm a, I'm a lady and I've got a bigger bust and everyone stares at my boobs all the time. All right? But more importantly, you're someone who maybe needs to be held accountable. So you need to do it and work around it. And you need to have an accountability system. You've maybe you've got great intentions, but you've actually got low energy. You maybe a little bit of poor confidence, poor in confidence, a little bit of less self-esteem. Maybe that's you. You just need to have that little bit of a kick along. You might be on some medication for like hypertension, that type of stuff, something for your diet. And reality is you want off of this. There have been multiple stories, multiple examples, case studies, trials where people who have started moving more, started just eating like a normal human being, being consistent, have got off their medication. Or maybe you're in the, the boot camp that I was in. You're concerned that you're actually not going to be around for your kids. My worst thing at 47 having two strokes, which is what happened with me, was damn. How do I explain to my four-year-old daughter and my two-year-old son that I need them to come and wipe my ass in the toilet? That's a scary thought. Okay, so leads me back to why the hell did I do what I did? And I got the program and it was trial and error and eventually the program's been built for. So the program has three fundamentals, right? I want us to be efficient with a day-to-day -day workout. For me, that's every day. I want to be consistent. I want to eat real food the way I should be able to eat it. Okay, and I need to have consistency in what I do. They're the top three goals that I have in the program. All right, so it's a solution. This is, again, <laughs> the picture of the gold bars. It's not gold bullion. It's not worth a mint, all right? but it's a solution. And like anything, when you find the solution, whether it's mine or someone else's, when you find it, it's like gold. It works for you. So this is what we call the McStraw method. We start off with the base. We establish our base level of our fitness, start setting some goals, get a baseline. This is where we are today. Everyone is different. We move into the reform program. So I wanna rehab. You got bad movement, can't touch your toes, can't, can't squat without keeping your heels to the floor, right? Can't lift your arms above your head and pin them against the shoulders against the wall and pull your hands down without your wrist coming off the wall. Then it's some reformation that we need to do. We move into the transformation program. That's where you start doing a little bit harder work. It's consistency, it's three sessions in a week, right? We start to introduce, introduce you to the different protocols and we start talking about behaviors. And then when you are ready, then you're gonna start jumping into that, what I call the performance program. So that's a five day a week thing. It's a six day a week thing. It's a seven day a week thing, all targeted specifically to you. We'll take some of the stuff that I do, some of the stuff that you like to do, put it together, and that's your program. And I'm also gonna hold you accountable for that. I want you to succeed because if you don't, then I look shit. So, do I have a guarantee? You betcha I do. I can get you to becoming fit in less than 2% of your week. 
20 to 30 minutes a day, seven days a week. All right? That's three and a half, two and a half to three and a half hours in a week of 168 available hours, 27, so 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's less than 2%. So why do I all guarantee it? Because you don't have any workout frustrations. I'll give you the program that I want you to run through once I sit down and I scope it out with you. It will be sustainable progression. I'm not looking for you to be perfect. I simply want you to keep moving forward. We use the term, I want you to fail forward. I don't want you to stay in the fail zone and go, fuck it, that's it. I want you to fail forward. So we talk about progress, not being perfect. We'll start to talk to you when you go through the program about eating food. So I want to see a food diary. I'm not going to say to you, you must eat this, you must eat that, here's my prescriptive diet. No, everyone's different, but I'll teach you how it is. You might find, for example, that you eat broccoli, it gives you a bad gut. Okay, the nutrients in broccoli for some people has an adverse reaction, particularly females who then find they're bloated. Had a client who did that, stopped eating broccoli. You know what? She had a donut in a day. Bang. Away went the bloating. Ha. Huh. Something as simple as that. And that's done in consultation with a proper qualified dietitian and nutritionist that we have access to. I want you to become fit. I want you to become strong. Your version of those. But more importantly, I want you to become ready to be able to perform. Perform as a parent a partner, a brother, a sister, an employee, an employer. So, what's been valuable? We spent a half an hour here of me rambling. What's been so valuable for you so far? Please put your thing in the comments. Let me get some feedback, like anything. I'd like to get some feedback from you about how I can best serve you in things like this webinar. So, do I have a prescription for you? Well, yep, yeah, like any doctor, I do. So, my prescription is coming to my program. It's pretty simple. We look at the different programs that we have available, and the way for us to do that is actually when you go through an application process. This is not something you can just go buy off the shelf, because I want to understand you. So, my prescription for you is this. It's an application process. I need you to apply. There's a form, it takes a few minutes. I need you to fill that out to be about who you are and where you are today. The form comes through to me. Okay, once you've submitted the form, I simply get you to book a call. We call it a discovery call. Some people call it a triage, a diagnostic, whatever, but it's really simple. It's a 10 minute call, all right? That 10 minute call is for me to sit down and work out, can I help you? How can I help you? And if I can't help you, I will tell you straight up, I am not in a position to help you today. So how do you go about doing that? So for the next 24 hours, I will put the link up. Go in there, click on the link. I simply need you to submit your application and I need you to book a call. And we will do that all through at a Facebook environment, which is something that everyone is familiar with. For the next 24 hours only, I'm going to take those applications. If you're still interested, please don't not do it. Submit it and I will get to you. But my priority will be in those people who submit the application within the next 24 hours. For those people, I'll get through to you. Over the next four days, that's my aim is to get the call. So this is the reason why the 24 and the four and the question mark is there. The sooner that I get to speak to you, the sooner I can work out if I can help you, the sooner we know whether this is right for you. And if it's right for you, that's what the question mark is. I will have a special offer available to you as a result of you spending your time with me today and going through this process. If you're not able to do that, within the next week, for whatever reason, and you come on at a later date, that's cool. I will still gladly go through the application process with you. But like anything, obviously, I would like to encourage people to join. So therefore, if we do that sooner rather than later, I'll have something to make it a little bit more attractive.
So if that's of interest to you, I'm going to simply type in the box here today. I'm going to give you a link. That link's going to go to an application page where some of this information is there that we've gone through in the webinar. Click on the link, complete the application, follow the second link, go to the Facebook page, book the damn call. Let's get in the call. Let's talk about that. I'll share more about the cost of the program. I'll show about more about the logistics, how we do it. If you're a Sydney-based resident and you happen to be within a proximity to me, then there is face-to-face -face training. If you're not and you are someone that is a bit further apart or whatever, then we'll offer a combination of either a hybrid where we might do an occasional face-to-face, -face, but also to the program is available online and it is delivered through an online forum. My name is Dom McStraw. Thank you very much today for your time. This is the McStraw method and I'd love to be able to help you. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Look forward to hearing from you soon.